And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're talking about Lost Valley. Now this is the reprint of Lost Valley from Pandasaurus Games. Lost Valley is a game that came out over a decade ago. It was a game I really enjoyed about mining for gold, and I was thrilled to see that Pandasaurus was reprinting this game. It's a game about being a prospector and going out and getting gold. And one of the things I liked about the game was that you could play very quickly, your turns lasted quickly, and it was kind of an adventure and a discovery. Well, they changed it, they added more players, and they made actually quite a few other changes to the game. Let's take a look at how it plays first, and we'll be back. I already can tell you I like it. In this game, prospectors are going to be hunting for gold. They're going to be doing that with a card that they have. You're going to have uh, th items that you carry in your backpack, which has room for six items. And then you have gear. You have a cart, that, which is a gear you can buy. And if you buy that cart, then your backpack basically has ten spaces rather than six. And then a spot where you're going to put gold. You have a little dude on the board who represents your prospector. And on your turn, you can move and then take an action. Now moving is, us is usually you going from corner to corner. So you go to this corner, and when you go to a corner and it's next to stuff that should be there, first, if you're next to the river, you'll turn over the top river uh, tile from a pile of river tiles that are nearby, and you'll add that there. Then you're allowed to add, if you want to, one piece from the triangle pile. So let's say I add the top one here, which is a place to get skills, and then you add the rest of the places from the top of a pile of rhombi. So there I'd place this. Now, many times when you put these tiles out, things are going to appear on them. This shows that there's two river golds. I'm going to place two river gold pieces here. These pieces are either two or three gold, but no one knows that. I'm not supposed to look at them, like I just did. And here in the mountain, you'll put mountain gold, which is five or six. So I'm going to put four of those here. You'll also notice that this says six plus. That's because you would only use it in a game that has six people or higher. Now after I move there, if I'm moving next to the river, I can move again. Or normally you can only move one. Let's, let's say I started here and this was my first move. But this is my second move, so I do the same thing. I do the river again, and put a river gold on that. And this time I decide not to do a triangle, I want to do some more uh, round buys out there. And I found more river gold and more mountain gold. And you keep doing this, and as you do this, the area that you discover is going to grow. And so on and so forth. Okay, the... The goal is to, to keep building up this. If the river ever comes to the end where you can't place any more tiles or you've run out of tiles, then you'll place this ending spot on the river and the game will begin to end. At that point in time, you'll place an ice flow here and after the end of each player's turn, you'll roll a die. If you roll a snowflake or two snowflakes, it will move that many spaces down the river. A blank, nothing happens if you roll the sun. It moves one space back up. When it gets here, the game is over. And the, whoever has the most gold is the winner. Also, if you have 10 bags of gold in your gold bag, you can go back and declare that the game's over. Everyone else has a turn, and you can find out whoever has the most gold is the winner. So there's two ways to end the game. Now, I said you can move, and I showed you a little bit about how moving and exploration goes, and it will get a little bit bigger than this, again, depending on the number of players. But you also have an action. Players are going to start the game with tools, and you can go back and get more tools from the store. But you can spend a tool to build things in different areas. Like in a forest, I can build a sawmill. In, um, in the river, I can build a fishing net. So I can put that fishing net somewhere in the river if I'm next to a river spot. I can put a trap out where there are animals. I can build a mine in wherever there is 
um, mountain gold. And each of these different things is going to take an action. And when I build these, I'm going to get an experience point. I can also, I have, there's lumber that you'll be carrying around in your backpack. I have no idea how. And you can build a flume that brings water from one spot to another spot. And so these give you experience points. When you get a second experience point, you will get a new skill. Each player starts the game with a skill. Each of these skills gives you some special ability. Miner, scout, you know, uh, and there's just different skills that you will have. Maybe you get to take extra gold when you mine or what have you. They all have different things. To, do, to build those gives you experience points. But like I said, the whole point of this game is to get the gold. Well, to get the gold, if you get a gold that's on a river, you simply have to pay one food. And players will start with food, but they have ways to get more food. Um, and for each food that you pay and you take an action and a food, you get a river gold and add it to your bag. Getting gold from here is harder. First, you have to build the mine, which costs a wood, um, a food, and a tools to build. Then you have to pay a wood and a food each time that you mine that gold. Of course, it's a lot more gold. Getting river gold that's not on water itself is harder too because you have to get water to it. So you have to build a flume to get there. Then you can start getting that. And you can't take multiples of these as an action. You can only take one. Actions are quite short. So to get more wood, you have to be next to a forest, spend an action, and you get a wood. If there's a lumber, if there's a mill there, or I'm sorry, a lumberjack camp or whatever, you'll get two wood when you go there. And notice that wood, when you put that in your backpack, will take two spots rather than one. Uh, you can, you'll need food. So you can fish. If you're next to water, you can fish and get one. If there's a fish symbol there, you'll get two food. If there's a trap there, you'll get two food. If there's fish and a trap, you'll get three food. So that's a way to get food. You can also hunt animals for food. When you're in a spot with an animal, you can flip the animal over. You then roll a die. If you roll this target symbol, you got the animal. If you roll the trap symbol and there's a trap there, you got the animal. If you roll the rifle and you have own a rifle, you got the animal. If you roll an X, you miss. But you get a big X and next time you hunt an animal, if you roll the X, you automatically hit. When you hit an animal, you'll take the animal and keep the animal as a, it's worth one gold, it's pelt. But also you get the amount of food. This is a mouse or a rat, so not very good. But let's see, there's some better ones here. Here's an elk that's worth three food. There's also question marks. You see those scattered around the board. You can spend uh, food to turn over a question mark and it might be a tool. Here's a fishing rod. Whenever you fish, it gives you an extra item. They also might be part of a treasure map. Now this here is uh, part of a treasure map and what this token does is it shows you a type of terrain. In this instance, it's water. So I know that the treasure is next to water. As I get more of these, and if you find these little exclamation points, these, that they're always these treasure maps. If I stand at an intersection and I have the right terrains for that intersection, so this here is mountain, water, and forest. Well, there isn't one of those right now. That's mountain, water, and forest. But let's say, for example, I found tokens that were water, water, plains, and water. I have three waters and a plains. Then I know the treasure's here. And I can go to that spot and get some gold. When that happens, I'm going to get one mountain gold token for each treasure token I had minus one. So there I would have used four. I would get three mountain gold tokens. Very hard to do, but if you pull it off, that's fantastic. You can also go back to the, to the store here at the very beginning where you start it. You can buy some treasure clues, but you can also buy all sorts of other equipment. There's tiles for each of these equipments. And in fact, with the game, some of them actually have a wooden piece, like there's a wooden canoe or a wooden horse. And they're, they're pretty simple. You can buy more tools, so you can build more things out there. You can buy whiskey, which you can spend to get an extra action. You can buy a, the cart to give you more spaces, a canoe. When you move next to the river, instead of moving two, you can move three. A horse, you can move two anywhere, not just next to the river. Rifle, good for hunting. Axe gives you extra wood when you chop it down. Fishing rod, uh, you get extra um, fish. A sieve, when you get river gold, you can take two instead of one. And a box of dynamite, you can take two mountain gold instead of one. So these are the different things that you can buy at the store, and so you have to weigh, you, have to, you don't get change. So are you going to go back and use some of your precious gold that you've gotten? This will continue on until the game is over. Whoever has the most gold is the winner. As I said, there's quite a few changes from the original game. First of all, it goes up to five or six players. Six players is fine. I, I, I was a little worried that it would slow down, the game down, but because your turns are really fast, you move and do a small action. And once you get everyone into that mindset, people 
because people are used to taking big long turns. Now move and chop a piece of wood down, move and get some gold. So once you start doing that very quickly and all these things are going on, you can the game just goes boom, 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 boom around the table. And so even for six players, not so bad. These triangular pieces uh, were very difficult to place in the original game. You had to build it so that it was an exact spot where a triangle. And I would work hard to do that, and sometimes I got one out. Here they go out more often, and they have some cool things, like a, a place to get whiskey, you found a still, or maybe some dynamite, or maybe a, a cabin which has clues to the treasure location. So those are cool, and I'm glad that they made it easier to put them out in this new version. Also, the, the treasure map itself. It's a really cool. It's kind of a long shot to get those treasure tokens and then find that exact spot. But it's, it's a neat thing. It gives you a sense of finding treasure, and you can spend time doing that, and the payoff is great, but you might lose while you're wasting time hunting down something that may never appear. Uh, the skills are new, and this is my one negative thing about the game. I love the skills. I think they're great. Like, for example, if you're the flume builder, when you put a timber out, you can put two flumes on the board. If you're a mine builder, it's, easy, you, it's easier for you to build a mine. Um, if you're a runner, you can make two movements uh, instead of one. Oh, oh, and sorry, so you can make a movement for your action. So you can basically move twice in a turn. So that's neat stuff, but the problem is I have to look at this, this all the time and try to remember what they all do because it's not really obvious. And there are these little tiles. I wish they had made them cards, a little deck of cards that just said exactly what it did. Because you, you get to choose between three of them, and so you're like, okay. Uh -huh. And to me, that really slows the game down. It's been a lot easier. I might even make cards and put these on them. It just seems like a much better idea. Um, the component quality was pretty much unchanged, except they added the little wooden pieces for the, the horse and the canoe, and that was cool. They also added claim markers. When you build a mine, you can claim it, and other people can still use that mine, but they have to leave something there for you, basically pay you something to use that mine. That's great. But one of the fun things about this game is stealing other people's gold, uh, but at the same time, uh, it can be really annoying when you build a mine and everyone runs in. Here, at least, there's a cost and you'll get something out of it. They changed the values of the gold. Gold, River Gold was 1 and 2 in the original game, still is. Mountain Gold was 3 or 4, now it's 5 and 6. Much better because the Mountain Gold is much more difficult to get. There's other minor changes, but that's mostly it. There's some cosmetic changes, but for the most part, it looks the same. I really enjoy this. I love the exploration and the different strategies. You can run and try and get a bunch of river gold and end the game before the mountain gold people can pull theirs in. You can go out hunting treasure. You can try to do a mixture of river gold and mountain gold. You have to decide, when should I go back to the store? Should I ever go back to the store? But man, getting that cart gives me extra spot to put in more food and wood so we'll go out and get more gold. Uh, getting that horse lets me move faster. The canoe, I can cross the river. Um, and so, <sighs> Uh, the, the way they did hunting, they changed that. I like this uh, custom dice. I'm always happy with those. But it makes the rifle make more sense, and traps are new, and they give you those experience points. I'm just really pleased by this. It seems like there's a ton of options, and there is. But like I said, it's quick. You sit there and go, I need wood. All right, I'll go over here. Uh, I'll build a, a lumber mill here, and then I'll chop some wood, get some extra wood. Now I'm going to build a mine. You know, it's not like you have to sit there and think, but you really have total freedom. I'm going to go down this side of the river. I'm going to go over here. And the exploration factor as you turn over the tiles is really enjoyable to see what kind of terrain you're built. And I love the fact that they use rhombi and, because placing a rhombus is much more, I don't know, there's something cooler about it than placing a, a square. And it also builds kind of a cooler map, actually gives you some neat things to do. So, huge fan of this game. I think they did much better with this reprint. It's great. It's streamlined. Even more fun. My only problem, like I said, are those skill tiles. But other than that, this is a home run for me. Very enjoyable game. It certainly doesn't feel like anything else that I have in my collection. I'm glad to have a copy of Lost Valley. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. At the door. Yeah. Yeah.